This is a video demonstration of the local interface of all of our DVRs. All of our DVRs share the same interface and the same GUI. So basically, if you know how to use one, you know how to use all. You will find that there are different features that are available on one and not available on the other based on the type of DVR that you get from us. Now there are m several ways to connect to our DVRs. You know, the first method is locally. Local connection can be done using a mouse, can be done, which is included, can be done with a remote control, which is included, or using the buttons on the interface of the faceplate. So those are the three methods of local um, configuration of the DVRs. The other method is remotely or through the network. Now this can be done from anywhere in the world that you have an internet or data connection from just about any computer and any mobile device. Basically you can use Internet Explorer, Firefox, Google Chrome, Safari and some of the other browsers out there as long as they accept the Internet Explorer plugin and we also have our free applications for iPhones, iPads, Androids, Blackberries, Windows Mobile and Nokia. Additionally we have our video management software which is uh, enterprise level software and it's free as well and it allow you to connect to multiple DVRs at many different locations at once and control them all at one time and you can create groupings of cameras and do all kinds of really neat things like EMAP and, and all kinds of neat features but each of those connection methods are all in separate videos so be sure to check out all of the other videos. So this video is going to demonstrate the local interface which is really easy to use and very intuitive and I'm using a mouse which is included connected to the USB port. So all you have to do is just double click on any screen and that'll take you to full screen. Additionally you can right click and then choose different camera views. Here's a four camera view, here's an eight camera view, here's a nine camera view, and a sixteen camera view. Also you can digitally zoom in on live video. So if there's something you're looking at and you want to capture a little more detail, I'll keep in mind this is a digital zoom, then you can go ahead and choose the area that you want to see some more detail in and blow that up digitally. So that's another great feature. Now also as you go through this, you'll see that we can go ahead and control your PTZs or pan tilt zoom cameras that are connected to the DVR. You can do this remotely or locally at the DVR itself. And all you have to do is just click pan tilt zoom and the pan tilt zoom uh, uh, controller will pop up whoops and the pan tilt zoom controller will pop up and you can just use this to move around to zoom in and to zoom out very easy but our DVR has an extra feature when it comes to pan tilt zooms and that's the PTZ trace feature and this is a unique feature to our unit you go ahead and click PTZ trace and then you just move your mouse around and it will basically follow you anywhere you go and then to zoom in and zoom out, you just use the scroll on the mouse to zoom in and zoom out. Makes it really easy to interface with a PTZ, and it's a feature that most of our customers absolutely love. Now we'll take a look at color settings. This is another great feature. Each individual camera can have its own color settings, and in addition to that, you can put it on a schedule. So daytime can have one setting, and let's say nighttime another setting. This is really handy at night when you need a little extra brightness or maybe the saturation to go down or the white level to go up, etc. So this is a unique feature. You can fine tune every camera individually at the DVR. When you do this, this will affect the recording and the live viewing both. The next feature that we'll take a look at is our search feature. Now our DVR really blows away the competition. Now this new firmware is not available in the economy series, at least not yet. But all of our other DVRs have this feature available. So searching for your footage could not be easier now. All you do is click the date and you'll see here in blue the dates that have recordings. Today's the sixth of the month, so of course it's only showing the previous uh, five days of the month that have recordings. And then when you go down here, you can click on the timeline. This is a 24 hour period we're looking at here. Now you can look at one camera's recording, four, eight, or all 16 cameras at the same time. Let's go ahead and take a look at 16 cameras. Very few DVRs can play back 16 cameras at the same time. 
our DVRs can. Now you just choose your timeline. And by the way, I've got this checked for synchronized. What that means is all the cameras will play back at the same time. So if there is no motion on a specific camera, you won't see any video for that camera. You can also choose unsynchronized, and basically what will happen is all the motion events will play individually on each camera. They may not stay in sync because one camera that doesn't have motion at that time will show up with the next available time that there was motion. So we'll go ahead and just select a time zone. Let's go ahead and pick uh, 9.30ish. And right now we're playing back all the channels that had motion going on at that particular time. Now, I'm going to show you a feature that really blows competition away. Let's say I want to know this car disappeared. Somebody stole it. And I want to know, or, or let's say, uh, I'm sorry, somebody pulled in and hit something when they pulled in over here. And I want to know what time they actually pulled in. I can do a smart search. So I just select a box over the area where this vehicle is and click smart search. And that will immediately take you to video where motion occurred inside of that box. And I can see at 9.19 a.m. this car pulled in. That is a tremendous feature and a time-saving feature when it comes to looking for uh, specific events that occurred. Additionally, while you're in playback, you can actually zoom in and get a closer look at specific areas just by picking a box like we did before, and then the magnifying glass shows up and just click this and it'll allow you to zoom in. So again, a great feature. Of course, you can fast forward, rewind, etc etc and listen to audio of the recordings if you have microphones connected so we'll go more in detail on the technical aspects of our DVRs in other videos this is just an overview so now we'll take a look at the uh, main menu so when you get into the main menu you see your search feature again very easy and intuitive easy icons to follow here's your info allows you to see the hard drives that are connected by the way our DVRs uh, will hold between, depending on the unit, our economy and our elite minis will hold one hard drive up to three terabytes. Our elites will hold four hard drives internally. Our ultimates will hold eight drives internally as well as our 32 elite. So you can hold up to eight hard drives internally. But even greater than that, you see this eSATA here? This means that you can connect an eSATA to this device to this particular DVR, which we do sell these devices. Our eSATA devices will allow you to add another four hard drives to the storage. Additionally, you can group your hard drives into groups, and you can assign specific cameras to record to specific hard drives. Now, this is really handy when you're using eSATA because you could have the DVR record, let's say, your cash register camera to an eSATA device only. And those four hard drives will give you, let's say, a year of storage for that one camera. And you can just store that long term on your eSATA device. So again, this is a great feature. Um, additionally, you can see the bit rates that each of your channels are consuming. You can see the log, which will show you every event that has occurred in your DVR, if it's rebooted, if it's shut down, if somebody changed a configuration, and you can see what user did that. So make sure that you do assign different users with different passwords, with different levels of access, so you can see what exactly has been happening to your unit. Also, you can see who's remotely logged in, and you can block them, you can disconnect them. Then you have your settings. You've got your general settings where you can set up your time, date, uh, what to do when your hard drive is full, whether you want it to automatically overwrite so it's first in, first out, or whether you want it to stop recording and then send you an email or ring a buzzer or notify you in some other method when the hard drive is full so you can replace it. Then uh, you can choose how long you want people to stay logged in before they're automatically logged out. And your snapshots. Your next setting is your encode setting. Now this screen will allow you to configure each camera individually for your resolution, your frame rate, your bit rate, and also your substream. Now the substream is a very important feature. Most DVRs have one single stream for recording. The problem with that is you often are not able to set up the DVR to record at the highest available quality settings because when you remote in from outside your network, there's not enough bandwidth there to allow you to view all your cameras at the same time when you do so. 
So that forces you to reduce the quality of the recordings. And the whole idea behind recording your cameras is to have the highest quality possible. Our DVRs have a substream. What this means is you could set up the mainstream to record at the highest quality possible. So your recordings are the highest quality they can be. And then your substream will be used for remote access from all your devices, other computers, uh, your iPhone, your iPad, Android devices, etc. You can set up the substream at a lower bit rate, lower resolution, and lower frame rate so that it will allow you to access all your cameras at one time. This is a great feature. Additionally, here you would select whether you want to be able to monitor audio from outside or not. And we'll take a look at your schedule. Here you can set up a schedule for each individual camera. You can tell it whether you want it to do motion recording, regular recording, what times of the day and what days of the week you want it to do so. Also, our DVR is able to do both regular recording and motion recording at the same time. So you could set up 24-hour day, 7-day recording at, let's say, a lower resolution at 1 or 2 frames per second, but then when motion occurs, you can have it record at the highest resolution at a higher frame rate, and that will help to conserve storage on your hard drive. So some really neat settings here. Then you have your network settings. This is where you put in your IP address, your port numbers, etc. Now, one of the new features available on all but our Economy Series DVRs is UPnP. Basically, this will allow for automatic port forwarding if you have a UPnP-capable device. Most of the new routers out there are UPnP-capable. So if you're not sure about how to forward ports and open up, opening up ports and so on, you can have it do it automatically for you. You also will set up your email server here because this DVR will email you, if you so desire, when events occur. And it can email you with a snapshot or without a snapshot. So you can be out and somebody walks in your front door, and if you have it configured for motion detection on your front door, it could then email you an image of the person who walked in your front door to your cell phone or, or your computer, and you'll be able to see an image of that. Also, it can email you when there are problems with the unit, like when your hard drive is full or uh, when other events occur. Your alarm settings, you have alarm inputs and alarm outputs on your DVR. You can use this to control all kinds of devices and to set off all kinds of devices. For example, you can hook up a buzzer, an alarm, let's say an access control door to your DVR. You can have it on the alarm input when somebody opens a door that it will automatically trigger a PTZ, pan tilt zoom camera, to swing in and cover that door to give you extra detail. Or you could set it up to when there's motion at a specific motion detector that is connected to your DVR that it will email you a snapshot of that motion event. It's really, there's so many different uses for this. We've had so many interesting uh, conversations with customers of all different ways that they've used these alarm inputs and alarm outputs. Your pan tilt zoom settings. Our DVRs will work with almost any PTZ on the market. As you can see here, these are all the different protocols that our DVR will accept. Then you have your display settings. Now our DVRs, except for the economy version, have HDMI video output that you can connect to an HDMI monitor, and that's 1080p video. Then you have your VGA output, which will connect with any VGA monitor. And then you have a B and C output, all for the main monitor, all three of these. And your B and C output can be used to connect to, let's say, a TV. All three of these can be used at the same time. So you can have three separate main monitors connected to your DVR, all active at the same time. In addition to that, we also have a matrix, which I want to point out. Now, the matrix is a really neat setting because the matrix will allow you to set up a spot monitor let's say a monitor in your warehouse that monitors the front door in the parking lot and you can set up an interval of cameras you select the cameras in the interval rate where it will go ahead and sequence cameras throughout that spot monitor again another great feature going back to the main menu uh, we will look at the advanced settings you can manage all your hard drives here uh, again we accept eSATA devices uh, really great features here Abnormality. You can have the DVR email you or set off an alarm or do different uh, you know, uh, alarm outputs for you when there's a disk error, no space, internet uh, disconnect, a conflicted IP address, or a MAC address problem. 
Moving on, you've got your alarm output controls. These can be used for any device that uses normally open, normally close. There are thousands of devices out there that this can be connected to. Then you have your account set up. Here you can set up multiple users, as many users as you want, each of them with their own username and password and access to different cameras and different configuration settings. Some may be allowed to control PTCs, others won't. Some have access to some cameras, others have access to no cameras. All of this can be set up here under user accounts. Your maintenance will allow you to reboot the DVR on a regular basis. We normally recommend you know, at least once a week having it reboot just to reset itself. And then you can tell it whether you want it to delete old files that are on your hard drives or not. And you can choose customize. You could say I want 30 days worth of storage, then I want it to erase all the oldest data and start fresh. TV adjust. Again, we already looked at those features, video matrix, text overlay. Our full-size units, the Elite, the Ultimates, and our hybrids have the ability to connect with your POS system. What this means is that you can actually have your POS overlay text on your video so that you can actually search for video based on events that happen on your point of sale device. So you can search by credit card numbers, you can search by transaction time, you can search by SKU number. So again, a lot of great features here. We have videos that discuss all of this in detail. And then you have your backup, allowing you to back up to different devices video. So that's a brief overview of our DVRs. I hope you found it informational. As you can see, our DVRs are truly the most advanced DVRs in the marketplace today. And on top of that, our tech support is truly top notch. We have English and Spanish speaking tech support agents here to help you. And we offer tech support during business hours, Monday through Friday, live tech support as well as tech support over the internet. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this to be informational. Thank you.